Okay, so let's continue on with animation in 3ds Max. And okay, looking still at our current scene, three boxes, one box is moving. Let's increase the level of complexity just a bit on this. And let's form what's called a child-parent relationship with the objects. Okay, so a couple things I want to do. Let's see if we can sort of stack these up and make kind of a lever arm, the base of which the lever arm is moving like that. Okay, so parent-child relationships. There are a couple of good analogies that you can think about. Um, the first one is if I have a planet that is moving in orbit around the sun and that planet has a moon that is orbiting around the planet. That orbiting around the planet, moon orbiting around the planet, would be a really difficult thing to process in terms of it would be making an animation path that kind of looks like this, if you can follow the cursor across the screen. Or I could just do a simple orbit once around the planet and say I want this object's motion relative to this planet. I like to think about it, however, exactly like it's described. When I'm walking through a parking lot with my daughter Olivia, she is running all over the place, but she has a hold of my hand, so technically she's tethered to me. So while she can sort of independently do whatever she wants, she's also locked into me. She is my child, I am the parent. Where I go, at some degree, she has to follow, but she has a little bit of free will within that. It's that same kind of thing that we're setting up in terms of child and parent. So first thing I want to do is let's kind of stack these dudes. So I'm going to get them roughly stacked on top of each other. And this is also a nice time to show you another quick feature of 3ds Max, something I would love to see in Revit, and that is multiple windows. So right down here at the bottom, I can quickly toggle this to four viewports. And that allows me to in all directions at the same time, sort of stack these things up, kind of, I don't want to say nice and neat, but kind of get them all working together. Plan, view, elevation, elevation, and perspective. Now, you can kind of do that in Revit with multiple views open at the same time, but not really as nice as that. And why it's not in there, I don't know. It kind of kills me. Okay, so these objects are stacked. If I move this lower box, nothing else goes with it. So what I need to do is establish a parent-child hierarchy. So what I'm going to do is this chain right here, select and link. I'm going to activate that. I'm going to left-click um, this piece of the column, and I'm going to drag it to that base. I'm going to repeat that exact same command, still active, this upper box to the middle box. So this is the child of that. This is the child of that. Now if I scrub through the animation, they're all moving together. Okay, so now if I activate Auto Key, I'm going to deactivate Select and Link. I'm going to select Move. I'm going to select this longer box. I'm going to establish my zero keyframe. Again, kind of out of habit. I'm old school, and I'm not sure that you need to. Do it anyway. Old school thinking prevails. I've got my initial keyframe locked in. I'm going to let this do one turn, and then I'm going to kind of use my rotation command to rear back this middle box. Okay, and you can see this is the child of that, so it's moving with it. And then when this comes forward, I'm going to rear it back even more. And as the box comes to its close right here at keyframe 60, let's do one more keyframe. I want to bend it back even further. Yeah. Then at keyframe 60, or actually just after 60, I'm going to allow this to follow through. Whack. And then just because I'm an animation geek, I'm going to give it a little bit of a rebound here. To here. So now if I scrub through with my shuttle, I've got this rotating around, I have my hammer rearing back, I'm going to have this slam forward, whack. 
I want one more layer of motion on that, and that's this top box. As it spins, I think it might be great fun to go ahead and rotate this around. Oh, great learning opportunity right here. The rotation axis is happening relative to the view, and I actually want to rotate this relative to the object. Okay, so you can see my axis system. If I rotate it right now, it's actually going to rotate in a really weird kind of way relative to this column. Control Z. Let's undo that. Get it back to where it was. Right here will change how my object axis relates to the entire 3D environment. So in this drop down list, I can go to screen, world, parent, local, gimbal, grid, working, or local aligned. Typically, I'm going to toggle these between view, world, and local. I especially like switching things to local because that's going to align the axis to the object. Cool? See how that's done that? So now, as this object comes around, I can rotate my hammerhead into place whack like this right around 90 ish again precision is your enemy I landed right on 90 that's awesome now when it comes to this location I'm gonna go ahead and rock that piece back even more more follow-through follow-through is awesome that's gonna whip back even more at this time And then it is going to come forward to increase the force. Wham. And then as it rebounds, it's going to have a little bit of follow through this direction. So wham. Uh-oh. Too soon with the follow through. More keyframe. A little bit of follow through. And rest. Whack. Cool, so I have a parent-child relationship on this object. This object is driving both of these. This object is driving this one. But each of them have the opportunity to move independently based on the motion of the other. This notion is called forward kinematics. When we're working with advanced character designs, things like that, a lot of time we'll be dealing with inverse kinematics, which would be I can grab this and move it and the structure is going to follow that gets into a little bit trickier work to set up I think it's probably outside of the range of what you guys want to try and accomplish um, in this particular class on VR so let's do one more quick thing I'm gonna turn off auto key I'm gonna hit the play button so we can watch this is closer to real time but it's not exactly real time in terms of this happening okay so just a few additional tools to round everything out, okay? If I need more than three and a third seconds, which is going to be often in terms of building an animation, I'm going to go to this little clock configuration, time configuration button right here. On this, I can see that I'm national transmission SC something, I don't remember. Um, which is 30 frames per second. I can switch to film, which drops me to 24 frames per second. Keep it at N NTSC 30 frames per second. That's going to be your best kind of way to work through things. I can rescale time. In other words, I can start making things move faster or slower if I've got a really complex animation and it's just a little bit too fast if I want to tweak it. I can build variables for everything. Probably the most important part of this, though, is underneath animation, my start time zero, zero on my timeline. End time, let's change that to 600, which would give me uh, 20 seconds. Is that right? 20 seconds. Yeah, I think 20 seconds. Okay, I now have 600. So you can see all of my keyframes are still bunched up here at the beginning, but my timeline goes through all of the total time right here, zero to 600. So if I have a more complex animation, I can add all of that stuff in. I can begin adding additional keyframes out here. So let's change that back to 60 because that is my last keyframe. 
whole thing happens over the place of two seconds. Whack. Well, I guess it goes a little bit fast past that, doesn't it? Uh, let's set it to 70. There we go. Okie dokie. All right. So, object, keyframe. Last thing that I want to show you guys is when I hit play, just because this is moving and moving fairly quickly, it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm seeing my motion in real time. In other words, when the shuttle gets to 30, this is slightly more than one second. And it's amazing, uh, and different computers are gonna play this back in different ways. So in other words, if your computer doesn't have a really fast video card in it, rather than getting to 30 at something close to one second, I might be getting to 30 at say two or three seconds. So watching these previews is going to help you understand what the motion is doing. It might not give you exactly what's happening in turn of final speed. So that's the last thing that we're gonna cover in the last video on animation.